interesting. I noticed something about you. You seem to have something on your face. What is that? What do you have on your face? You have a cross. That's right. You have crosses on your face. What do the crosses, uh, who do they remind you of? God. They remind you of God? Yes. And they remind you of Jesus, God the Son? Yes, because Jesus, he died on the cross. Today is the first day of Lent. That's a season where we prepare ourselves and we get ready for Easter when we celebrate that Jesus not only died, but that he rose again. And today, to start us off, we put these crosses on our foreheads so that every time you look in the mirror or when you see your reflection, you say, oh, that's right. And you remember what Jesus did for you and how much Jesus loves you. And then, just like you can see your cross, that uh, you others can see that cross too, and that when um, that in everything that you do, in everything you say, in everything you do, that you remind other people of Jesus. Because this cross reminds us what Jesus did for us, a special message for you, dear ones. The fact that Jesus came and he died and he rose again, he did that because he loves you that you have a place in the heart and in the mind of God, and that you are God's treasure. That means you are God's most important special ones. So let's pray and thank God for that. Dear God, God, thank you for loving us so much much. that you come to us us. and give us eternal life eternal life through Jesus. Jesus. In everything we say and everything we do, help us to make you proud. We thank you that we're your dearest treasure. And you are ours. Amen. Tonight, there's no nursery or activity time, so you get to stay in all of worship with all the grown-ups. That's very exciting. So you can go back and sit with your families. My husband, Taylor, and I recently brought a fireproof and waterproof safe. We uh, were amused by the fact that it comes with $50,000 insurance uh, of the contents inside. And that's amusing because we're not going to put anything worth $50,000 in that safe. (laughs) But just in case our will, our living will, gets destroyed, we can get another safe. (laughs) And so I've lost a lot of hours of sleep worrying about what will happen if something happens to Taylor and I. What will happen to Henry? And so we have the safe to keep our will and our living will. I thought buying a safe in which to neatly organize our documents would give me some peace of mind. It hasn't. (laughs) I think what would really give me some peace of mind if I could take Henry and lock him in that proof safe. If I could take Taylor and lock him in that fireproof, waterproof safe, then I could be sure that nothing would keep me awake. That's not true either. And you know who else I'd like to lock in there? All of you. Sometimes there's a compulsion to protect everyone from suffering, from evil, from hardship of any kind. I wish would that we could put each other where no flood or fire or moth could destroy. That desire to keep those we love safe is a truth-revealing desire. So what is most important or most valuable to you? If a fire were to destroy where you live and everything you own, I'd venture to guess that you'd be able to let all of that go And that what you'd most want to save in that moment of that fire would be the people in your home, the people in your building. If you were caught in a flood and everything you owned washed away, I'd venture to guess that your heart would not ache over the things, 
but over the people who were swept away, whether you knew them or not. Natural and human-made disasters cause us to reflect on what's truly important, and that is what Ash Wednesday does for us as well. The purpose of Ash Wednesday, the purpose of today's scripture readings, is to help us to focus on what is truly important, to honestly acknowledge what our hearts treasure. For where our treasure is, there our hearts will be also. We hear Jesus say this to us in today's gospel, and we want to respond, yes, Lord, it's you. You are my dearest treasure. With our lips, we confess what's truly important is Christ, our relationship with the triune God, but that's not what we confess with our money, our time, our behavior. Our behavior and how we treat others more often confesses that we love approval, recognition, applause, praise for ourselves. Our behavior, how we treat others, often confesses that what we love most is our family and our friends, not God. With our time, we confess that we treasure our own independence, our pleasure, our own autonomy. With our money, we confess that we treasure stuff, possessions, financial security, our ability to secure it. Now, it is, it's not wrong to prepare for the future. In fact, that's good stewardship of the resources God has given you. It's not wrong to love your family and your friends and enemies. In fact, we know that's what God commands us to do. And it pleases God when we care for the well-being of those he has entrusted to us. Okay, so enter more deeply. When we see someone serving someone else, we may say, hmm, that person's heart is in the right place. The phrase is used especially when that person who's trying to do good messes up to say, well, the outcome might not have been good, but at least their heart was in the right place. We say that when we miss the mark. So where our stewardship, where our purpose, where our hearts miss the mark, or when we might say when our hearts are in the wrong place is when we put our trust in ourselves, in our things, in other people, in institutions, instead of putting our trust in God alone. Our hearts are in the wrong place when pleasing friends, when pleasing family, when pleasing other people, when avoiding conflict or creating it to get our own way, when we do those things rather than when we are obedient to God, that is a signal that our hearts are in the wrong place. Today, Ash Wednesday, is a chance to honestly acknowledge that we waste our talents, we waste our purpose, we waste the life that God has given to us by storing up things, by storing up people, by storing up reputation for ourselves. When we worry, when we fret, when we have sleepless nights, when we are fearful or greedy, bitter or resentful, when we are envious, these are clues to us this is a system of self-awareness which God has instilled in us. Clues, these emotions are, that we have given our hearts to false treasures, that our hearts are in the wrong place. And Jesus says to us, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We have strayed. We have locked our hearts away in a safe, given them away to those whose love we want, turned them into stone. We've put our hearts in the wrong place. Yet even now, says the Lord our God, return to me with all your heart. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. There's just one problem. Our hearts and our wills are bound. We do not always, or we do whatever we want, whenever we want. And unfortunately, what we want is not Jesus Christ. Now, immediately upon hearing this, our hearts rebel. They say, that's not true at all. I do want to return to the Lord. I do want to do what's right in God's eyes. I can well will myself to do good. It's true that you can do good, a great many good things in this life. However, before God, this is not what saves us. This is helping our neighbor, which we are commanded to do and which does please God. 
but it doesn't save us. Doing good fulfills the commandments. It does not save us. And we don't always want to hear that. We want to be able to do something. What God wants is our whole heart. And we don't want to hear that. Our hearts don't want to surrender in complete obedience to God, in complete dependence upon God. We want free will. We want autonomy. We want control over our lives and our hearts. What God wants is our whole heart, our whole selves, so that he can truly free us. What God wants, rather than civic righteousness for eternal life, is to give us his own righteousness for eternal life. God wants his son, Jesus Christ, not the law, to be the one true thing for us. And so, in this predicament, there's only one thing that can be done, and it has already been done. To win our hearts back in the right place, Christ was born, died, and raised again to win your heart back so that you might have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and abundant life in Jesus' name. Christ came to us, died for us, rose again for us, not just to show us that the triune God is gracious and and merciful, but to extend God's mercy to us. Christ came and died and rose again, not just to demonstrate that the triune God is slow to anger and relents from punishing, but to take anger and punishment into God's own self on the cross. Christ came and died and rose again, not just to prove that the triune God is abounding in steadfast love, but to pour out that love upon us as he poured out his life for us. Through Jesus Christ, we know God's own heart, that his heart is Jesus. And so now God is no longer a complete mystery to us. We know God's true self, God's own heart, Jesus Christ. The same is true of God that is for us. Where God's treasure is, there his heart is also. Jesus Christ, God's own heart, is with us. God has given us his own heart to be with us. God has given us his own heart to the place where his treasure lies. God has put his heart where his treasure is, in you. He has given you his own heart because you are are his dearest treasure. Your life, your salvation, and your heart are not in your own hands. They are in God's hands. No one, not even Satan, not even your own sinful self, can take you out of God's hands. Because of Jesus Christ, you are safe with God where no thief can touch and no moth can destroy. Thanks be to God for where your heart is, With God, there you will be also, now and forever. Amen.